Hi everyone, on today's video I am going to discuss about three important stocks that I feel can give a very good up move from this point. Two very important disclaimers that number one, this is not an investment advice, please consider my points as a research point. And second equally important point is that the growth of these stocks literally depend on the market circumstances. For example, if the entire market crashes then of course these stocks are also going to crash. If the entire moves sideways then these stocks might also move sideways but if a growth run scenario happens in the market maybe three months six months down the line then these stocks are very likely to move so listen to the entire commentary you will learn a lot about business analysis what aspects of research report to read etc etc and tell me in the comment box which of these three stocks am i most bullish about so let us kickstart our discussion and let me very quickly talk about the most important macro issue that is going on in the market that hey a recession is going to come it is going to get announced and as a result the entire Indian markets will fall, US markets will fall etc etc. I have already made a lot of videos you can go and check it but here is an important piece of data that I want to share with you. So this is a report by NDRG and they have built a recession prediction model. Now you will assume that okay they are going to predict recession the moment they predict recession the markets are going to fall and hey there goes all my gains. So please understand this model very carefully this is a fairly important research. So if you analyze the data you will see these bubbles right and you will see that hey this is what the model indicates that recession came here this was 2020 and this was again a recession this is again a major recession this is again a major recession so what do you find interesting about these one two three four five points so let me highlight this in blue and let me complete the story so you will see that if you correlate this recession prediction with the stock market movement so just after this point one the markets actually rallied just after this point two the markets actually gave an up move just after point three the markets again rallied just after point 0.4 the markets again rallied just after point 0.5 the markets again rallied now this yellow bubble is again forming which again indicates that a recession is there and here we are the markets have fallen so are they going to rally that is the simple question so if the markets actually rally from this point and if you're sitting on cash not doing anything you will lose a lot of money so it becomes very important for you to fundamentally understand what this data is telling us because right now you'll take a look at the data you'll say hey recession is going to be announced the market should fall then why is it that the markets actually rise as per this model the answer there is fairly simple that recession is actually a lagging indicator what is the meaning of lagging indicator for this you need to understand how recession announcement is made basically recession is the slowdown of the economy so first the slowdown of the economy needs to happen then the economic agencies are going to present their finding that you know what the slowdown of the economy has happened and then they will say that hey going back six months back we have been in a recession so please understand understand that these type of models are lagging indicators they do not tell you what is going to happen in the market going forward they simply narrate the story once it has already happened you as a stock investor what is it that you are trying to do you are trying to approximate what markets next move will be so to cut the long story short are we in a recession yes has that recession been factored into the market from the model it looks like that yes the recession has been factored into the market so as a result it is very likely that as per this model we will start rallying now so with that said let us kickstart our discussion on three stocks that I want to quickly talk about and this video has been sponsored by vested you can check my stock investments in the US invested by looking at the West that I've created and since US stock markets have gotten crushed more than the Indian markets so it might make sense to take a little bit of exposure to US equities as well and for that you can check the links in the description box so the first stock that we are going to speak about today is Wipro and a lot of you have commented on my YouTube videos that hey please speak about about Wipro please speak about Wipro so here it is so point number one that you need to take a look at is that how much the stock has fallen from its peak so you can draw this and you can categorically see that the stock is still down roughly 44 percent from its peak so it is getting crushed is it going to get crushed more why did this crushing of stock happen is it a good time to buy so let us quickly talk about those points but first key point to notice is that the stock is down by roughly 44 percent so let me give you a very quick summary as to why the stock has fallen by roughly 45 percent in this zone so there are three critical reasons around it so the first is that the US market has fallen quite a lot for example you can check Nasdaq here and it has fallen and has gotten crushed in the last six months like anything so this has been a broad-based 
market correction that has happened all across the globe but nasdaq which is tech heavy it has fallen more and because it companies in india depend a lot on the us economy so as a result there has been a lot of pitai of it stocks from this point if the us markets especially nasdaq if it starts running then something like wipro tcs infosys they will all start running so this is the first key reason i hope you understand why the stock price has fallen now of course everything can be blamed on the broad stock market sentiments that hey markets are falling therefore stocks are falling yes that's one part of the reason the second part of the reason is that wipro has been a fairly confused business over the last few years and as a result they have been unable to accelerate their sales growth and has struggled quite a lot compared to a company like tcs so let me just show you the breakup of the revenues so here is a breakup of the revenue and you can quickly see this and you will see that it is very well diversified that's one way of looking at it and second way of looking at it is that they are not focusing on any of the businesses for example they don't even categorize consulting as a business line on one of the reports they said that hey consulting is internally embedded into our different business functions so they have been unable to delineate this consulting business altogether so right now it looks like a very confused model because a lot of it companies are moving a lot and focusing a lot towards their consulting business but wipro on the other hand is focusing on other lines of businesses they are not categorically saying that but i will show you more data around it now the third key point why it stocks have fallen is because of the retention problems that they have been unable to retain employees and as a result it has reflected into their stock price so then comes the natural question that okay fine these problems have been there and as a result the stock price got crushed now can this company grow from this point okay so multiple points there so first and foremost this company is aggressively going and acquiring other companies here is a recent snippet of which companies they have acquired so they have acquired two prominent businesses at this juncture now you can also zoom in and see how much money these two new businesses are going to bring for wipro so this is reason number 1 why their sales is likely to increase now reason number 2 is that this quarter they have done the most amount of hiring so again the snippet is here you can go and zoom it and look at the number of people that they are going to hire this year now the third important point is that while wipro's consulting business is somewhat struggling of course they are not sharing the data but their other lines of businesses for example their machine learning artificial intelligence cyber security these type of businesses are growing quite aggressively now this also gets reflected into their order book and they have booked some of the biggest orders from large clients in this last quarter so these are all positive directions in which the company is moving but is there a way for you to check this out quantitatively so for this let me share some financial data so if you study the balance sheet and if you go on this fixed asset tab what you will see is they have invested a lot more money in the last 3 years in expanding their fixed asset capacity now this is not going to generate results immediately why again let me help you understand that so here you will see that they are making very big investments in intangible assets now what are intangible assets tangible assets would be something like factories plants trees tractor trolleys all this stuff which you can touch and feel intangible assets would be something like it or they have purchased some kind of research etc etc so those become intangible assets so now comes the natural question that is there a way for you to figure out that hey this business is actually going to focus on something like artificial intelligence machine learning or all this high end tech stuff it looks like it because they have made a significant investment here in terms of buying ips accelerating their rnd now comes the natural question that hey is it a completely safe stock for me to buy or should i look for other opportunities well there are risks associated with this stock the first and foremost risk with this stock is that this looks like a business pivot they are trying to move from consulting business into other type of businesses it might or might not pan out this is the first biggest risk that the business right now has The second key point is that even companies like TCS, Infosys, which generate higher units of profit on their investments, they are also getting into this space. So it is not as if that Wipro will get crushed immediately. It is very likely that the stock will bounce back. But if you have to consider one of a better buys between TCS and Wipro, which one would you pick and why? You tell me in the comment box. I will not reveal the answer. Now let us study second tech stock. So this is a much much safer bet compared to Wipro. And which stock am I talking about? I am talking about Adobe. And it is a wonderful stock right now and let me first and foremost tell you about the stock price fall and why the stock price has fallen if you understand just these two points you will be really tempted to buy this stock so the stock is down by roughly 58% so this is the first part that you need to notice the second key part that you need to notice is that this decline comes in two spheres so this is part one of the decline and this is part two of the decline now why am i delineating or separating these two parts i will explain you the reason in a minute so this first 
last part of decline was a broad market based decline all these stocks especially tech stocks were falling and adobe also fell this second layer of fall which is approximately 28% fall this has come because adobe has went and acquired a company called as figma now why has the market reacted so poorly that by very few next days the stock price fell by 17-18% why did that happen I will help you understand the entire story so first and foremost observe the balance sheet so here you will take a look at the total revenues and read US stocks from right to left so you will see 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 and the revenues have been going up there has been no problem in terms of the revenues still the stock price got crushed by more than 50% so this is something that needs to be noted because even if if you believe that the markets are overvalued yes they might be overvalued up to a point but 58 percent fall on a company that is compounding its revenue at a decent pace that looks a little bit off but what about profits so, okay if we take a look at the profits again the profits have been rising there has been no problem with the profits yes one could argue that profits could have grown faster this that but to cut the long story short the finances of adobe are not wacky as of now so then comes the natural question that okay why is it that the stock price has fallen a lot one of the key culprits for that has been the figma acquisition so basically figma is a ui ux design based company its annual revenues as of now are roughly 200 million dollars now adobe has paid roughly 20 billion dollars which is approximately 100 times the revenues to acquire that company so analysts are saying that you know what adobe you have gone crazy you are paying so much money this is just a horrible deal now guess what where did this type of a scenario played out in the past also type out in the comment box pause the video so this scenario exactly played out when facebook went and acquired instagram for a hefty sum people said that you know what facebook has gone crazy this that but now look at the revenue numbers for instagram instagram has become one of the pillar things that is allowing facebook to survive at this juncture now the ceo of adobe who is an indian person he also believes the same his interviews came out in the paper so he said that you know what by acquiring figma we are cutting down our research and development time which makes a lot of sense because related to wipro story that they are trying to do a lot of r d but they are building their capacity on their own now adobe does not want to do that it simply went and acquired a company that which already had its r d in place and they have cut down that r d time so from right away they will be able to enter this ui ux domain and integrate into its product suite where they are already winning now here is a portfolio of businesses that adobe runs now you might have heard that adobe after effects adobe premiere pro adobe pdf all this stuff are market leaders and market winners they almost have a monopoly here but in integrating it to UI UX based things becomes very very important for Adobe to accelerate the next layer of growth for the firm. But the market right now believes that Adobe has actually made a mistake by purchasing Figma. Now you will say that Akshar, do you know more about the market compared to the market itself? No, I do not know that. But there is one key point that I know. When there is panic in the market, people oversell stuff. The stock market is a deeply emotional place in the short term. Now tell me this and I will paint a picture for you that if the nifty breaks decisively 18,400 levels and when people start seeing other people make one and a half, two percent gains daily for three, four days, what do you think is going to happen? People are going to jump into buying more stocks. Why? Because people are much more worried about short term than long term. Now opposite happens when panic strikes. Right now there is a lot of panic that you know what tech stocks are going to get wiped out, recession problem is there, Nasdaq is falling, Adobe is overvalued they have purchased a really bad firm also this that and the stock is getting heavily beaten down now how much gain do i see immediately in the short term now to understand this we need to go to the history of certain dates so for example if you check this part this particular part this is roughly a 28-29% fall. Now, why am I highlighting this part? Because Figma got acquired by Adobe from mid-September. And this entire stock price fall represents that sentiment. So this entire gain of roughly 25-30% is likely to happen as soon as we enter the bull phase. So yeah, I am a buyer in this stock and I'm buying more of it. Now let us move to third and final stock, which is IDFC First Bank. So first and foremost, I am quite bullish about the entire banking sector in India right now, because number one, I feel that banks are deeply undervalued. I keep on highlighting the returns that HDFC Bank has made in the last five years, which is approximately 50-60%, which is really, really bad returns for the leading bank in India. So therefore, I feel that banks are available at a good valuation right now. Now this theory is backed by certain fundamentals and data. So what is the data that I will show you? So take a look at this chart and what this shows is the stressed asset problem in banks. 
For example, the stressed asset in private banks in India used to be approximately 41 billion rupees. Now, over time, this stressed asset situation has come down. In fact, in the COVID situation, Indian banks were already quite clean. Therefore, Indian banks were able to bypass this crisis with very little damage. Why? Because the bank cleanup had started to happen from 2016 onwards in India. So this is the first critical point because this bank cleanup is going to benefit all the banks. But unfortunately in this phase, IDFC First Bank's asset growth, it did not rise too much. For example, let me show you the charting history here and what you will see is that this phase for IDFC First Bank till December of 2021 was a consolidation phase. It's not as if that they were able to get more assets or get more customers to deposit more money into their bank at a massive rate. So the acceleration pace was very, very slow. Now you might ask a very natural question that you know what bank cleanup had already happened then IDFC first why was it not able to aggregate more assets well the reason there is fairly simple and it has to do with the history of IDFC first bank and this is a story that you can understand from this chart so for example what you will see is that IDFC first had huge exposure to infrastructure loans for example back in 2018 you can see that the total infrastructure loans made up 21.7 percent of their books over time they have brought brought this down and as a result what has happened is that the business has become much more diversified rather than depending on five clients they have been able to spread across their assets to bunch of different clients so as a result the asset quality for IDFC first has improved quite a lot now this data can be found out by looking at the concentration of loans given to top 10 borrowers so you can see that financial year 2018 the bank had exposure of approximately 19% to its top 10 borrowers. This has come down to almost 6% now. So to cut the long story short, in 2022, IDFC First Bank is sitting in a situation where its books are clean, its asset quality has improved dramatically, its customer base has become very diversified and it is set for growth. Now you might look at this chart and say that, you know what Akshat, it is almost trading at its one year high. It has just crossed its one year high trading peak. So should I not be worried? Should I be worried about this thing? So, okay. So let us quickly check the PE ratio of the bank. So here you will see that the bank currently has a PE of roughly 27. HDFC has 20, but please remember the size of IDFC first bank is roughly 25 times less compared to HDFC. So it is much better to compare the PE ratio of IDFC first bank with something like Kotec Mahindra. So Kotec Mahindra PE is higher than IDFC first. So yes, despite IDFC first bank, despite making its one year high, is it a bad time to buy this bank i will leave that decision up to you and there is final risk profile that i will talk about with idfc first bank so right now if you take a look at this chart what it simply shows is that the cost of acquiring customer for idfc first bank is higher compared to other banks so that is a worrying thing but hopefully this will come down with time as the bank becomes more efficient in terms of acquiring customers making profit out of every money that they are spending etc etc that will come with scale that will come with experience and hopefully it might become not the next HDFC bank but it might then become the next Kotec Mahindra bank so let me know what do you think which stock am I most bullish about which stock are you most bullish about I would love to know and if there is a detailed video that you would want me to make on any of these three stocks let me know i will be happy to do it i also gave out very quick market commentary on the youtube member section it is a paid member subscription where i talk about some fundamental points about stock market slightly more advanced strategies more in-depth research and detail and what am i buying and selling so i hope you enjoyed this video please press the like button and i will see you soon